Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, while I was at CES 2019, I saw for the first time with my own eyes an 8K television and I particularly remember the one from Sony because it's now for sale. You can go and buy one at just the bargain price of $15,000. Now, obviously, we're just at the beginning of 8K. Things are going to get cheaper. But if 8K was just about screen resolution, then this would be a very short video. In fact, I could stop it just about now. But actually, it's a bit more complicated than that. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so I want to look at this whole idea of 8K in four separate categories. First of all, we're going to look at the screen resolution. We do need to cover that. Second of all, we need to look at how you can record in 8K. Thirdly, we need to talk about codecs and a little bit about bit rates. And finally, we need to talk about content. So straight on into screen resolution, obviously 8K refers to the number of horizontal pixels there is on the display. So 4K, approximately, you were talking about 4,000 pixels across. In fact, it was 3,860 by 2,160. And with 8K, we're looking at 7,680 by 4,320 pixels. So just like, um, for full HD was often called 1080p, sometimes 4K is referred to as 2160p, and 8K can be referred to as 4360p. And actually that's the uh, numbers that YouTube use. When you get down there in the corner to click on a little, on the little setting to set the resolution, those are the numbers that it will use for setting 4K and 8K and so on. Now there are variations of this exact dimensions depending on which format you're using, Obviously, uh, 2160p and 4320p are both 16 by 9 aspect ratios. When you go to 4 by 3 aspect ratios or when you go to even wider aspect ratios, they, the number of pixels does actually change, but this is roughly what we're talking about. So we've talked about 8K displays for televisions. Of course, 8K has a role also for monitors for PCs, for the display that you might get on a laptop, and maybe even in the future for smartphones. So an 8K display can be applied anywhere where you can have a display. Now, a couple of key takeaways about 8K. One, of course, is because it's got twice as many pixels across the horizontal, it's also got twice as many pixels on the vertical, which means you're looking at four times the number of pixels in total, because of course we're talking about the area of the screen. And it's also worth mentioning that if you want to connect to an 8K display, you're gonna need DisplayPort 1.4 or greater, or HDMI 2.1 or greater, because they have the right bandwidth and so on to support an 8K display. Now, one of course of the best ways to get 8K content onto an 8K display is to record it. Now, if we just look at 4K for a moment, nowadays, lots of devices record 4K. A lot of smartphones record 4K. You just get out your smartphone, you put it into the 4K mode and you can record 4K content. And that's also true of a lot of mirrorless cameras. For example, I have a Lumix, Panasonic Lumix camera, which is micro four thirds, and that records 4K as well. However, 8K, because we're right at the beginning of this kind of new era, is actually quite different. At the moment, really the red cameras are the ones that are the most uh, popular, prevalent for recording 8K. There are others, of course, but of course these kind of cameras are very expensive. So really for 8K to get popular in terms of, you know, your own videos and even in recording kind of YouTube videos, we are going to have to wait and see 8K get adopted in both smartphones and inside kind of mirrorless consumer level cameras. And talking about recording the video with a camera, one of the important aspects of recording is the video codec. Now the codec is a bit of software that compresses down the huge data stream into something much more manageable. Now if you think about it, 33 megapixels per frame at 60 frames a second is giving you a huge amount of data. Now for 4K, the codec of choice is really H.264 and that kind of brings it right down into a much smaller size and H.264 is what Google would recommend if you wanted to upload a video to YouTube, for example, using uh, 4K. Now there are other codecs around, for example, VP9 is also a very popular one. Now when we get over to 8K, H.264 isn't really able to cut it, although you can actually put H.264 in 8K, although it's kind of a bit of a weird configuration, but really the recommended codec is H.265, or as it's sometimes known as the HEVC, the High Efficiency Video Coder. And the thing about HEVC, H.265, is that it gives you about 
half of the file size for the same level of quality. So while 8K has the potential of being four times larger, because obviously you've got four times the number of pixels, actually using H.265, we can bring it back down to kind of halve it, which means you kind of get double. Okay, that's the overall calculation. An, an 8K stream will be about double the size of a 4K stream. And talking about streams, it's worth mentioning for a second that when you uh, upload a video to YouTube, for example, for streaming, YouTube recommend anything between 35 and 85 megabits per second for a 4K stream. And services like Netflix and Apple TV kind of stream their 4K in kind of like 10 megabits a second, maybe 15 megabits a second. And a format like the 4K Blu-ray disc will actually go as high as 50 megabits a second. So we can basically think that for the 8K world, we need to double all of that. So if you want to upload an 8K video, Google are probably gonna recommend something around 70 megabits a second upwards. I guess companies like Netflix and Apple, iTunes are gonna be streaming at 20 megabits a second, maybe 30 megabits a second. And if there ever does become a kind of a disc like Blu-ray that holds 8K video on it, that's gonna be for ultra high quality, that's gonna be like 100 megabits a second. And that brings us nicely to the idea of content. We talked about theoretically what Netflix or iTunes would need to do if they wanted to stream 8K at what bit rate they would need. But of course they aren't streaming 8K today. They're still really transitioning over everything to 4K. Now if you go over to YouTube, you can find some 8K uh, videos there. Basically people have taken red cameras and they've recorded some 8K and they've uploaded it to YouTube or companies like Samsung and LG have been kind of creating promotional videos for 8K and uploading those to YouTube. But basically today there isn't very much 8K content, certainly in terms of what Hollywood is producing or what the TV uh, studios are making. However, in 2020, there is plans to broadcast the Olympics in 8K, and obviously that will be limited to where it can be received in 8K, and of course having an 8K television. But that really is the big first step in actually getting 8K content out there. And of course, over the years, that's 2020, maybe by 2025, we're gonna see much more 8K content out there, which will be available for download or for streaming. But today, we're right at the very beginning. It really is the very beginning, but of course it will change. And kind of 4K will continue to get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. It will become kind of the standard like full HD is today. 4K will replace that. 8K will become for the enthusiasts and then progression further on down the way like that. But as I said, if you want an 8K television, just pop down to your local electronics store, give over your $15,000 and then you can get yourself a nice Sony HD television. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And well, uh, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.